are. It's so bad. Naima Tang is a beauty expert and one of my favorite YouTubers who has a series called The Darkest Shade. But instead of talking about makeup like she normally does, in Harper's Bazaar, go to bed with me. She is sharing her nighttime skincare routine, and we are going to be here reacting to it. I am so excited, but I'm also a little bit nervous. <laughs> For those who don't know or are new here, hello, my name is Cassandra Bankson. I've been an expert in the skincare industry for over 10 years and I've suffered with acne for over 15. I'm a licensed medical esthetician, I do have experience in medical settings, and although I have worked with dermatologists, I am not a dermatologist or physician. That being said, I love analyzing, scrutinizing, and learning from different skincare routines, and today we get to do that. So let's press play and see what's going on. So yes, there has been times where I have fallen asleep with my makeup on and woken up to the craziest looking pillow. That's usually after a night of like, champagne. <laughs> so I have sensitive dry skin. Whenever I'm in the airplane, my skin gets super dry. Whenever I try new products, I break out in a rash. I'm just gonna push my hair back first. All right, there you go. So the first step, I'm I have to say, because I've been watching her videos for a couple of years, I've noticed in the past that she seems to have what looks like Melia. Melia can sometimes look like pimples, and I feel like she's mentioned pimples in the past. Everyone has their own skin issues or skin problems, and for me, it's these tiny little bumps that just won't go away. And again, I'm not a dermatologist. I do not diagnose disease, but looking at the Melia where it was, it seemed to always be there. Again, if it doesn't bother her, don't worry about it. This is a totally normal condition. Unfortunately, it can be confused by acne, and it really is not. It's also something that you do have to see a licensed dermatologist or a medical esthetician working in a dermatologist's office in order to remove. It's not something you can get rid of with products. And the reason I bring this up is because I thought I was going to see it on her skin right here, and at least with this lighting, it looks like they're completely gone. So I'm wondering if she got them removed, but I'm sure if I be patient and just actually watch the video, maybe I'll learn more. <laughs> so the first step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take my uh, makeup off with the Dermalogica Pre-Cleanse. This is their oil cleanser that they have. Everything I have pretty much is travel size because I am traveling right now. Oh, <clears throat> I'm already forgetting steps. You gotta take my lashes off first. It is what it is. I tried different oil cleansers, but this one's just kind of bay. It's just been around. So a fun fact about the Dermalogica pre-cleanse, um, when I was originally in aesthetic school, we used Murad and Image, and then later on in my career, I was at a place that used Dermalogica. Dermalogica is very hit or miss with their products. They have a great educational program, so they're often pushed a lot by estheticians, but it is hit or miss. Out of all of the products that they do have, the pre-cleanse is one that's actually worth the money. And I'm happy that it seems to work for her skin. And I also like that she uses the one minute rule when it comes to removing her makeup. It's just been around for a while, so I use it. So next I'm going into the Kiehl's Deep Cleansing Foaming Face Wash. This product is for normal to oily skin types, but I like it because it really doesn't dry you out and also it gives you a really nice deep clean. If you're looking for like a drugstore or affordable version of that, um, the Neutrogena Hydro Boost cleanser is pretty good and it's also affordable. The two that she mentioned are probably okay. Again, she has mentioned in the past that she has dry and sensitive skin. I like that she's aware of her skin and aware of what the product claims, but still uses it on an ingredient standpoint. I personally only use cruelty-free products, so I have not looked into the ins and outs of Kiehl's and Neutrogena recently, but she really is a living example that shows understanding your skincare and understanding those ingredients and how it feels and works on your skin is more important than what the label is trying to tell you on the very front. Remember, the front is all marked Marketing. Turn and learn. You see those ingredients on the back and that's telling you the true story of what's in those cosmetic products. So I started double cleansing when I started wearing makeup and that I realized that like the oil cleanser wasn't getting my makeup off good enough. Like it'll get that first layer of stuff off your face but then you'd still have some stuff left all over your face so then I go in with an actual cleanser. Well, that's just kind of like my thing now. I don't like to just do an oil cleanser, or I don't just like to do a face, a soap cleanser. I'm gonna go into the Vitamin Nectar Vibrancy Boosting Face Mask. 
And I've been on this journey of trying to balance out my face and my chest. So uh, my uh, okay, she's doing something that I'm cringing at because it's so bad. But I also do it too. She's using the fingers to scoop. Ah, uh, I do this as well. We've all done it, but especially not washing your hands right before going in. If you have the option, use a disposable or use a spatula. Especially when you're traveling, it's more likely that you're putting all of your cosmetics into a cosmetic case, into a suitcase. They might get left there. They might be in a hot car while you're traveling. It's a breeding ground for bacteria. And especially if you're traveling, you're more exposed to different germs and microbes. They clean hotel rooms and change sheets, but the hotel staff does not wipe down handles. So please please keep that in mind. And especially when traveling, touching the handle of the sink and then going right into the product. Ah, oh, it's so bad. And I cringe partially because I do it too. The pharmacy mask that she's mentioning does have some great antioxidants in there. It can be a little bit irritating. And because she's mentioned that she is prone to sensitivity and rashes, I would want to know, is that eczema or psoriasis? And would any of those ingredients cause a flare up for her later on? If you're looking for some good antioxidant infused products, one of my favorite affordable lines is from The Ordinary. They have a lot of serums. You can just drop and mix things in. My Shell is a cosmeceutical line that is fantastic. And if you don't mind a lot of plant or botanical extracts if those don't irritate you. You could also look at Eminence Organics from Hungary. They also have a lot of antioxidant infused stuff that I would personally recommend over the fresh vitamin face mask. My face is a few shades darker than the rest of my body so I've been on this journey of like doing healthy peels for my skin and this is one of those products. It's like a nice light healthy peel. Wait I didn't know this was a peel. Google! <laughs> Hearing her say peel does scare me just a little bit, again, because she is a type six on the Fitzpatrick scale, the Fitzpatrick photosensitivity scale. People who are a four, five, or six have more offendable skin, meaning that certain ingredients or certain procedures could actually cause lasting damage, such as keloid scarring, hyper or hypopigmentation. There are certain acids inside of chemical exfoliants or chemical peels that have been known to cause this in people. I know that in some foundation videos, she's mentioned hypopigmentation basically little spots that are slightly abnormal. That can also be caused by cosmetics as well as sun exposure. Let's look at the ingredients. Mm. It's not a peel, <laughs> but it does have a couple ingredients in there that I don't like. <laughs> and for her skin type, I don't know if I would totally recommend. Most people are okay with plant extracts, but plant extracts can be irritating. Essential oils can be irritating and fragrances can be irritating, especially because of the pigment of her skin and especially because she has dry skin, sensitive skin, and has had rashes in the past. I would not use this. There's a condition called contact dermatitis and it's essentially these rashes, this inflammation of the skin. But for some people, they don't show up immediately. They show up multiple hours or even days after. And for people who get this in response to their laundry detergent or in response to their skincare cream, it can be kind of hard to pinpoint when it shows up so much later. So if this is something she's still struggling with and if it coincides at around the time she started using this product, I might want to know for her if there's a correlation and if she took this out of her routine, if some of that sensitivity issue would be mitigated. Masking an eye cream used to be like, what's the point of it? Because I've always had pretty decent skin. But as I started wearing more makeup, I realized that masking is super important. So this mask right now that I'm wearing and then eye cream. But I've only noticed a big difference with two eye creams. So I'll show you guys those at the end, like when we get to eye creams. But yeah, because most eye creams are crap. If you've been here for a while, you know it. If you're new here, you're welcome. <laughs> Save your money! Usually at this point in time I'm watching YouTube so I'll either have like a candle going or like I'll have my phone there and I'll be watching YouTube or like catching up on like 911 or like I love Hey Paris and then a lot of commentary like social commentary on YouTube so I've been watching Chrissy and Paris Milan and yeah that's what I've been up to on YouTube. Alright so I'm gonna go ahead and take this off now with this towel I am gonna get it a little bit warm. Yes! And I'm just gonna wipe this off. So on my chest, I have a bunch of like little tiny scars from like, and I'm also a picker, so that doesn't help my case at all. Me too. Cries and pimple popping. So next I'm gonna go into a toner. I'm gonna use the Fresh Deep Hydration Facial Toner. I'm using this because I know I'm gonna be using a peel. Going in a little bit more, not invasive with the toners that I've been using recently, but I have used more like 
aggressive toners in the past and they're just they just don't work for my skin type so when I'm trying to find products that work for my skin type I definitely don't rely too heavily on other people's recommendations only because I have to actually see the the actual proof and see the change in my skin the product actually has to work for me to see a difference so next I'm using the fresh black tea kombucha facial essence this is just a bougie product that you don't need, but if you have, go ahead and enjoy it. <laughs> At least she's honest about it. It's bougie. You don't need it. I'm hoping she got it for free. So in between products, I definitely like to dry my face in between them. I don't know. I just have this weird feeling that I can't just throw wet product on top of wet product on top of wet product. I have to actually let it sink in and sink in first, so I dry my face in between. So yeah, here's my Patrick Ta fan. I might have to adopt this practice. <laughs> I normally wait and just stare blankly into my own eyes in the mirror, but fanning sounds good. As I started experimenting with complexion products, I noticed that there was a gap in the industry and there weren't products for me for my complexion really, and that's how I got onto YouTube. After years of trying to find products that were for my skin, that were supposed to work for my skin tone and not really finding them. So that's how that started. And three years later, here we are changing the industry, one video at a time. This is the Murad Replenishing Multi-Acid Peel. This is good. That's what I was talking about with hydration. It's still a peel that's gonna peel, like gonna give you that nice fresh layer of skin, but it's also replenishing and it has the oil in there so it doesn't dry your skin out. Like if I was using any other peel right now, my skin would look so next I'm going into the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair. She's been using this for literally three years. I'm so happy it works for her. I think this one has like a night repair technology that has some sort of retinoid derivative in it. Um, that could be really, really helpful. And I trust that she knows her skin and what she's talking about. If it works, it works. Like it really just does. As far as hydration, all the hyaluronic acid, and then they just came out with a new component too. Not a component, but new addition. And that one has 15 times the amount of hyaluronic acid. Yes. So then next we're going into another skin rejuvenating product. This is the Peter Thomas Roth 3% Retinoid Plus High Potency the Retinoid yes. Serum. This, these yes. They're so long. You don't really think about it until you're actually trying to name them. This serum though is bomb. It's truly, it truly has transformed my skin. My skin is so dehydrated that it cracks and so I have to actively like make sure I am rejuvenating my skin and since like always making sure I'm getting that dry layer of skin off and this definitely helps with that. What's interesting about this and what she's saying, obviously it works for her, but retinols have been known to be drying. There is actually a phase when someone starts a retinol, especially in a medical office, there's like a six week process of getting used to that retinoid. So I'm interested to hear that this has not caused major peeling or extra dryness for her. Maybe she's already gone through that like induction phase. This is the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair Eye Supercharged Complex. I am literally almost out of this and this is like my third one. Uh, I'm not a big Estee Lauder fan for a lot of reasons, including the additives and the major markups. <laughs> One brand that I find very comparable, but to be superior in ingredients is Glow Recipe. They have a watermelon line and they have an avocado sleeping mask with retinol. I would highly recommend the retinol one. Or if you're interested in a similar nighttime product, walk your butt over to Sephora and ask them for a sample of both and see how your skin likes it. Let's just go on with this and I'll probably skip moisturizer today. I just went in with the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair Intense Reset Concentrate. And I'm just going to use that as my moisturizer today. Then I'm going to go in with the Fresh Vitamin Nectar. This is the Antioxidant Glow What? Water. Hey, it is fun. It is bougie. Skincare is self-care. But do we really need that? Another bougie product you don't need, but I have, so I'm going to use it. It's just really nice. It feels really good on the skin. It's like that last... I respect so that. <laughs> So next I'm going into a lip serum. They definitely are needed and they serve a purpose. This is the Naturally Serious 3-in-1 Lip Service Lip Serum. And actually I've been recently taking my entire skincare routine onto my lips. Like using my peel on my lips 
and all of my serums on my lips and I've kind of actually been into that and it's kind of been a vibe. No, 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 no! <laughs> I'm really happy that she likes it. I'm really happy that it's working for her. But this is a bad idea for a couple of reasons. Number one, your skincare is not meant to be ingested. Yes, your skin does absorb things. Many of those things travel into your blood and get filtered out by your liver, but you are not meant to ingest your skincare. The main thing is that the skin on your lips is very different from the skin on your face. The tissues are very different. The way the cells grow and renew in this area are very different. You also grow hair all over your face and you don't on your lips. Your lips don't have the phyllosebaceous unit. They are very different from an anatomical perspective and they need to be treated differently, which is why a lip serum and lip treatments are great ideas, but putting your skincare, especially peels on your lips, are not. And the truth is, when companies test their skincare, if they do, because note, not all companies are required to, but when companies test their skincare, they do it on skin. They don't do it on the lips. So if there are horrible adverse reactions, we wouldn't be told because the companies don't know because they literally didn't test them. Especially some of these products containing acids or retinol, Please don't do it. We're just gonna seal that off with the Kiehl's Butter Lip Mask. This, Yay! If you haven't tried product. anything from this, try this, and you'll see how good it is, and then you're gonna wanna try the rest of the stuff. Because that this is just like, you will see the difference the next morning in your lips. Again, with the finger in the product, but this is not as bad. The reason why is because lip products, again, are very different than skincare. Lip products are more occlusive, they're more waxy, and these waxy, oily textures are harder for bacteria to move around in, whereas products that are mainly water, it's really easy for bacteria to get in there, infect it, and move all the way around. So lip products from a tube or with a spatula are generally better, but sticking your finger in a lip product, sealing it up, and putting it into a hot, warm cosmetic container is not as bad as sticking a finger into a moisturizer or mask jar and putting it back in the same thing. <laughs> The YouTube community has changed in a sense where people, their capacity to be entertained requires a lot more as yeah. far as like, it's always, you're just, everyone's doing the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, what's going to get people's attention, what's going to be the next viral move or the next viral video. Literally why I'm reacting to this video. I have been on YouTube for 10 years and never filmed reaction videos because in my head I'm like... Who am I to judge other people's skincare if they're not asking me for advice? But you gotta do what gets those views, and honestly, every single time I watch a skincare reaction video from Susan Yara, from Hiram or James Welsh, or that hair guy that shows up in my recommendation, yeah, because they make me laugh and learn at the same time, I'm hoping this does the same for you. And I think that has changed a lot, especially since when I started, um, but as far as like my relationship with YouTube, I think it's amazing. I think the fact that I've been able to do what I've been able to do on this platform and not only, you know, create an outlet for myself to feel free, but to also create change in it as well is just an amazing thing. And so YouTube is here. I mean, it's here to stay regardless, but yeah, I'm definitely a fan of the YouTube life. The honesty and the empowerment is just seeping through her pores and it's what I live for. She is amazing. I'm about to head off to bed and put on my fuzzy slippers. They're pretty ugly, but they're wrong. But anyways, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching and a good night. Those are some bomb fuzzy slippers. If you enjoyed this video or learned something from it, make sure that you that like button and don't forget to that subscribe button if you haven't already. More reaction videos or videos to keep up with the trends, but hopefully still inspire positivity, inspiration, and change can be found right here. And as always, don't forget to be beautiful both inside and out. I love you beautiful butterflies and I'll see you all in this next video. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.